Today we are here at the Bhavana Society Center in the beautiful high view areas of West Virginia with uh, most venerable Henepola Gunratina Mahanayaka Thero. And we look forward to sharing his life experience with him on a great journey of communication. Although he is a world renowned meditation teacher, we would like to briefly introduce him before we start the discussion series of communication issues. It is our privilege, happiness, and great excitement to introduce the most venerable Henapala Gunratana Mahanayaka Thero and to spend time with the venerable today. The most venerable Henapala Gunratana Mahanayaka Thero will be 96 years old in early December this year, and he has been spreading the Dhamma through communication broadcasting since 1940s. Henapala Gundadana Mahanayaka Thero is the founder and the president of the West Virginia Meditation Society Retreat Center in the United States of America. This was started in 1985. Mm-hmm. And this meditation center is one of 500 unique religious centers named by National Geographic. At the same time, most venerable Henapala Gundadana Mahanayaka Thero was honored with the title of North America's Chief congregant. Most venerable Henapal Gundatana Mahanagitharo is a world traveler who has traveled to every corner of the world, sharing his knowledge of Theravada Buddhism using various communication devices, media and methods. The purpose, the purpose of this discussion is to share the life experience of Mahanagitharos in the greatest journey he has revealed in his life journey through communication methods such as radio, television, personal computers, email, internet, smartphone, social media, and video conferencing, etc. So Bhante, uh, we have a list of questions um, from our um, audience and also uh, youngsters. Uh, so we are expecting your help to capture this unique perspective um, so that we can share to the rest of the world. Okay. The first question, Bhante, can you describe the way people communicated in, in the 1940s when you were a child or a young adult? What were the primary means of communication back then? In- uh, they send uh, letters. Uh, I remember sending letters and receiving letters. Yes, we are very excited to see the postman coming with uh, letters, right. and uh, sometimes they bring good news yes. or bad news, right. and we look the postman who bring these letters. Yes. In case of uh, emergency, uh, if it is uh, at least eight or ten miles radius, uh, people walk okay. to convey the message. Suppose there is a death. Good. If you send a letter, it takes about two days. So as soon as somebody passes away, they don't wait two days to communicate. Mm-hmm. There was no embalming system. Right. Before the body start uh, decomposing, decompose, yeah. they have to cremate or bury. And uh, relatives, they also cannot wait too long for all the relatives to come. Yes, ma'am. So sometimes they take a bus or bicycle or walk to convey this sad message to their relatives. Uh, so although the uh, postal service was in action, its service is much slower than walking right. and uh, traveling by vehicle. 
That's what they did. There was no any other way to communicate. Great, great. Pante, how has the role of written communication, such as letters and postcards, changed since early years? What was the significance of handwritten letters uh, in your community? Yes, as I mentioned, yes. uh, for something which is not very urgent, they send either a postcard or a letter. The when you send the postcard, it is open. Yes. Anybody can read. If the message is something private, personal, they have to send a letter. Of course, the postcard is cheaper than a letter. Sending a letter is time consuming. Yes. You have to write it, you have to correct, then you fold it, put in an envelope, get, uh, you know, use your tongue to seal it, right. <laughs> get the stamp, and put it on the envelope. Go to the nearest post office mm -hmm. to mail it. So it is uh, time consuming right. uh, work, yes. communication. Uh, if it is not very urgent, then uh, doesn't matter if somebody reads the message, right. you send a postcard. postcard. Right. Yes, okay. good thing. The, the next question, Bhante, what were the challenges and joy of staying in touch with family and friends? who lived far away during your youth uh, as compared to today. This goes back to um, the time while you were studying at Gampa Pirivena and the time in India, you know, having read you some of your books. Since you were a world traveler, I think there were different media of uh, sending messages, as you said, from postcard to the uh, letter, so on and so forth. Is he Sometimes she sent telegram. Yes. And that also is a little uh, cumbersome. Yeah. In a way that you have to, uh, there's a telegram sending a, uh, uh, what do you call, place. Right. You got to go to that place. Yes. And then uh, write the telegram, yeah. pay it, pay for it. Mm -hmm. If uh, you want to send a reply, uh, what do you call, uh, prepared right. for reply, mm -hmm. then you have to pay something additional. Right. Then they uh, guarantee that it will go in one day mm -hmm. uh, or in one and a half, one and a half days, depending right. on the distance. Yes. Uh, when I travel, uh, all the communication was uh, uh, developed, uh, but there were no way to convey the message immediately. Mm -hmm. You have to go to, if you travel by plane, go to the airport, and then uh, uh, you have to find a public telephone. To use public telephone, you have to have a coin. There are public telephone booths. Uh, maybe three, four people can use one booth. When one person is talking, it can disturb the other person because they are all close to each other. Yeah. Uh, so they have to control their voice. Sometimes some people don't care for other people. Yeah. Shout. You can hear the conversation. Yeah. So if you don't have a coin, you have to look for somebody who can right. help you to change your right. dollars. Right. Uh, I remember going to Japan. Mm -hmm. In 1940, 1940, uh, no, 67, mm -hmm. 67. I had a card. Uh, I wanted to telephone certain person. I did not know the language. Right. I spoke. I, I dial. Yes. Put the coins into a slot. Yes. Uh, coin putting slot. So I put some coins and dial and dial and dial. Nobody, no answer because I did something wrong. Mm -hmm. Then there was a young man seeing me doing this. He rushed to me 
and uh, took my car. He didn't understand in English. Yeah, right. This is so he took, pick, you know, took my car, right. look at it, and he pushed a button. Then all the coins came back. Okay. And then he put coins and then dial, dial, dial. Yeah. Finally, he managed to communicate. Right, right. The message to the other person. Yes. So he uh, took my suitcase, went to the road, called a taxi, and uh, we drove about 40 minutes, mm -hmm. far distance. Yes. And then he got my first suitcase and get, got out of the taxi and asked me to get out. Yeah. And then we went to the particular temple, Buddhist right. temple, yeah. and put all the suitcase and they said, he said something to these people right. in, 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 in Japanese, yeah. and he ran away. Mm -hmm. He even didn't stay to hear my thanks. Right. So that is how it was those right. days. Yeah, right. So difficult to communicate. Yeah. What a kind person. He, said, well, he yeah. was a very kind yeah. person. Yes. So this can happen only in Japan. Right. Yes. So I yeah. don't expect this happen right. to happen. Though so you couldn't understand what he was see, saying at the beginning, but you became uh, over a period you could manage Japanese very well, I heard. Later on, I learned Japanese yeah. for five years. Yes. When I came to the United States, I had the same problem. Oh. Okay. When I came to the United States, I flew from uh, Amsterdam to New York Airport, Kennedy Airport. And then from Kennedy Airport, I wanted to go to Bronx Temple. Okay. Because somebody had given me the address. Right. I have never been to America. Right. For the first time I came, I did not yes. know anybody here. Yes. But this particular person who was in Malaysia, he went to Malaysia, I met him. Yes. And he had given me a card and said, if you happen to go to the United States, call this number. Mm. They will help you. Okay. There's a Chinese temple. Okay. I never had the wildest dream of coming to the United States. <laughs> However, it turned out to be that, right. that I was able to come. Right, right. And with this address I from the Kennedy Airport. Yes. I tried to call Bronx. Mm -hmm. You see there was a receptionist at the airport. Yeah. She would not interested at all to answering my question. Oh, okay. Not interested in answering mm -hmm. my question. Mm -hmm. She was looking at me because I was very right, very, right. very bright yellow yeah. robe. Uh, yeah. I was young. Yes. And she might have thought I was some kind of a hippie. <laughs> because that was the hippie period. Right, right. Yes. This is 19, early 70s, I guess. 80s. 80s, okay. Uh, so, anyway, I tried, 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 but at least, at least one whole hour, no answer. Mm -hmm. Then somebody said, there's a telephone call, go and call. I tried to put money, call, did not work. Right. Then I wanted to communicate this place. I mean, I would tell the, tell the yes. monks that I was coming. Mm -hmm. So people are going like a shooting arrows, going to the airplane, coming out, going out, yeah. in and out, in and out, in. Yeah. I tried to stop them and ask, me, ask them a question how to go to Bronx. Bronx. Right. Nobody wants to stop because they were so, they are so yeah, busy. They were so afraid of yeah. Hare Krishna people. Oh. They stop people and ask money. Right, right. So they were they thought that I was Hare Krishna. Asking for money too, yeah. And again I waited for another two hours there. Yeah. Trying to carry two suitcases. Right. And then one man said, there's a bus, go and take the bus, go to the port authority oh, yeah. in New York. Yeah. So I went there. Yeah. When I went to the port authority, yeah. there was taxi, yellow cab, mm -hmm. taxis. Yeah. Went thousands of taxis. Yes. And then going, coming. Yeah. All the taxi drivers took picked up uh, uh, passengers before me or after me, but I he did not stuck in the middle. Pick, pick me up. Yeah. I waited, it was dark, cold, I'm hungry, thirsty, yeah. anxious in this strange country. Yes. So at about eight o'clock at night. I one taxi driver stopped me. I got in, then he, uh, dro while driving, he yeah. asked me where I was going. Yeah. He drove about uh, two minutes. Yeah. Two minutes in in a it car is, it, would be about a mile. Right. 
He went that far and asked me where I was going. Yeah. I said to Bronx. Yeah. He said, I'm not going to Bronx. Get out. Open the door and put, throw me out of the taxi. Oh. Two, my two suitcase. Yeah. Two suitcase. Mm -hmm. Now I have to walk back to the same taxi yeah. stand. Port Authority, yeah. To catch a taxi. Yes. And waited, waited, waited. Then about, about 9 or 10 o'clock, mm -hmm. another taxi driver stopped. Yeah. He asked me where I was going. I said, Bronx. Yeah. He drove. Then I asked him, Mister, this is what I ha what happened to me. Uh, why is that? He said, he called me, Mister. Yeah. People don't want to go to Bronx even in daytime. So dangerous. So dangerous. Right. All the prostitutes, yes. drugs, yes. guns, yes. violence, mm. all are there. Right, right. Then I asked him, then how do you pick me up? Yeah. I said, I live there. Oh. People know me. Right. Therefore, they don't touch me. Right, right, right. This man drove me yeah. at about 1 o'clock in the morning, 1 or 12, 30, right. something like that, and yeah. then uh, I managed to get into the temple. Right. Yeah. That kind of problems I had to face when I was, travel, was traveling mm. those days. Yes. Because they didn't have a cell yeah, phone complete. or anything. Yeah, no cell phone. Nothing. No cell phone. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Bhante. Um, how did technology like telephone, we are coming to that now, yeah, yeah. impact your community in the mid-20th 20th century? Uh, <clears throat> were there any memorable moments associated with using telephone? Uh, telephone, as far as I remember, in 1950s. Yes. Uh, I was in, uh, actually 1941, okay. I went to Gampa, Bandi Mole Yes. And then there was another temple close by called Yakkala Temple. Mm -hmm. Yes. I used to go there very often. Right. That monk has some political connection with the with ministers yeah. and so forth. Yes. And therefore he try to get a telephone. Right. Otherwise, you go to the nearest post office mm -hmm. and book a call. Right. They take maybe two hours, three hours, sometimes yes. half a day. Right. To you have to wait. To you have to wait. Yeah. To get the call. Right, right. Oh my. So then as soon as the post office uh, got the clearance. Yes. They would send a message to mm -hmm. this temple, then you yeah. would go and make a call yeah. for two minutes this much, three minutes this much, you have to pay. Right. So that is how they communicate, used the phone those days. Mm -hmm. It was in 1944 or 43. Right, right. Good. Please share your experience using coin boxes. You did mention yeah. few experiences. <laughs> and the, probably the rotary phone as well. Mm -hmm. Then, especially when you travel at airports and uh, prepaid requirement to book a call at the post office. This came, question came from someone. So yeah. you did address, but is there anything that you like? You know, th that is another problem. Yes. You have to have a correct coin of that particular country. Oh. When you call from here to, uh, say, Brazil, Yes. You have to use American coins. Right. When you call from Brazil, yeah. I have to have <laughs> pesos. Yes. their coins. Yes. If you go to England, you yeah. have to have their coins. Right. Sometimes you change money. Yes. Then you come back, you have a handful of coins oh, from each okay. country. From foreign countries, <laughs> yes. That's right. <laughs> Bhante, uh, did your monastery or community have access to radio broadcasts or other forms of mass media? in the 40s, and if so, how did it affect your daily life and interactions? In the uh, 40s, yes. uh, I don't remember having any uh, communication system right. uh, other than, as I mentioned earlier. Yes, the post office, local post office could send it. There is a post office. Yes. There were main post office, sub post office, yes. and mailbox. Yes. 
and so forth. Right. So if it is a rural area, we have a sub-post office. Right. Very minimum facilities mm -hmm. are there. But no telephone, I guess. No telephone. Yes. No. But, the, but they have their own telephones. Right. Like in, uh, you know, railway stations. Yes. To communicate from one from station. From one station, yeah. Other, yes. They have a system. Right, yeah. But uh, uh, in rural area, oh, okay. we don't know how they communicated, but right. there was no telephone. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. One thing, can you share your first experience with introduction of television in your life? Well, <coughs> television I saw yes. for the first time in Thailand in <laughs> 1962. All right, yes. I went to Thailand yeah. and then I saw Thai young Thai monks, I yeah. was also young, yes. sitting in front of a box. Right. <laughs> and then this inside the box, you can see something like a snow. Oh, these are black and white. Black and white. Right. It's snow. Yeah. And through the snow. <laughs> so bad quality. You, you, you can see a figure coming out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Then see, ah, this is beauty contest. <laughs> that was your first experience. First experience. Yes, seeing a beauty contest. Oh. <laughs> they did not know what right. was there. Right, yeah, yeah. And they figured out yes. what it was. Yes. Coming through this snowy <laughs> right, right. box. What ex good experience. <laughs> My goodness. And I myself actually was wondering what was behind this box. Oh. <laughs> All the beauty is behind the box. Behind the box, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good, good. Okay, Bhante. The internet, uh, now we are moving to internet now. The internet has drastically changed the way we communicate today. What was your first experience with the internet? And how did it impact your life or your spiritual practice? Internet actually, <coughs> um, at, the, at the beginning, yeah. Uh, I was afraid to use it mm -hmm. because uh, I might make mistakes. Right. So I, I have a, a very uh, strong inquisitive mind. Right. We we see that all the time. Yeah. yeah. I always want to learn something. Right. Yeah. Even now I'm sixty, ninety-six. Yes. Even now, I like to learn. Yes. And therefore, whenever I met somebody, I would ask that person to help me to use the internet. For instance, uh, the email system. Email system was, I took quite some time mm -hmm. to figure out how to make an email address. Right, right. I did not know how to do yeah, that. Yeah. They, Taught me, yes. but uh, changing email address, mm -hmm. uh, using passwords, right. and uh, so forth. I, I did not right. know. Yeah. I did not go to school to learn these right. things. But right. when people come, yes. they were very kind enough mm -hmm. to guide me how to use uh, yeah. e email. Yeah, email. Uh, then. Uh, Gradually, I learned to use email. That's the first thing I learned, mm. email, yeah. in, the, in the internet. Right. Uh, application. Application. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 Right. right. The, so where was and what time period is that, uh, Bhante? Were, were you in the US or? No, here yeah, in America. All oh, right. Okay. Actually, I no. learned it after coming to the Bhavana Suit. Right. Okay. Okay. That was in uh, mid eighties. I started uh, uh, society. I started in eighty two, nineteen yes. eighty two. Yes. I moved here in eighty eight after right. building. Yes. Building. Sure. And then eighty eight onward. Right. I started using uh, internet. Right. While I was in uh, Washington before that. Yes. I knew how to use the computer. Mm -hmm. Somebody taught me how to use the computer. Right. Because I knew how to type. Right. That is another revolution. Hmm. Or handwriting. Yes. 
and then typewriting and yeah manual typewriter right electric typewriter right and then the keyboard and the how has the rise of smartphones and digital communication influenced your daily life and interaction with your fellow monks or the broader community and then tackle one question is and how did you familiarize with smartphone have you taken classes like i did or we did uh, to learn now actually in uh, the smartphone is uh, uh, several generations quick jump from to the beginning of uh, cell phone yes because earlier there was no smartphone no no no, no. there were uh, cell phone yes first generation yeah first generation cell yes. phones yeah. uh, very primitive type yes uh, i saw uh, that uh, mobile telephone mm -hmm. it was like a big brick how oh, you carry wherever you go carry wherever yeah, you go. So yeah. like a yes like a big blue right. block yes <coughs> and uh, even the computers mm -hmm. i went to the university of tennessee in 1971 and then after giving a lecture to a certain class mm -hmm. the professor who invited me mm -hmm. uh, asked me to asked me whether i like to see the computer room Mm -hmm. So he took me to a room. Yeah. The entire room was a computer, a right. building. Yes. Large building. Yes. Uh, air conditioned building. Right. Uh, what they did was uh, key puncturing. Right. To punch cards. Punch card. Yes. Punch card. Uh, and then there was another machine to insert the card. Yes. Which read the machine right. read the card yes yes that's also computer right uh, so cell phone is cell phone is, came out much later very much later yeah that also is that big type of, uh, of cell phone yeah then small smaller 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 then came yes the smartphones right right uh, yeah. now we have smartphones yes now A smartphone is actually revolutionized uh, mm -hmm. our way of uh, communication. Okay. In a, within a second, yes, we can communicate with anybody in, in any part of the world. Right, right. I tell you one uh, incident. Mm -hmm. In two thousand sixteen. Yeah. No, two thousand sixteen. Yeah, two thousand sixteen. Yes, one. I went to uh, Singapore, Indonesia, Malaysia, and I had a ticket to go to Australia. Mm -hmm. I used medicine after my bypass. Yes. I took medicine for three months. Okay. and uh, i was supposed to be in singapore one month sri lanka uh, what do, i didn't plan to go to sri lanka malaysia and so forth all mm -hmm. together within three months i was supposed to finish everything and return yes but uh, because of this uh, our scholarship in sri lanka yes. uh, the chairman of the mm -hmm. com committee invited me to come to sri lanka to sir You know, do some work for on our scholarship fund. Yes. I went there for five days. Yes. Then in three days I had pneumonia. Mm. I was hospitalized and I had to stay there for two weeks. Right. I went there only for five days. Mm -hmm. Now I have pneumonia and three weeks, two weeks. Yes. After recovery, I had to stay another three weeks. Right. Then I came to. Had to come to Singapore and stay mm -hmm. for another two weeks. Mm -hmm. All the almost going three, four months. Yeah, right. My medicine was finished. Right. And the benefit of cell phone, I say, I'm going to say, tell yeah. you. Yeah. Right. So uh, this uh, Bhante Sadhguru was in touch with me. He yeah. communicated another person who had my travel insurance. Right. She was in Switzerland. Hmm. Oh so God. she told he told her yes that uh, i was running out of medicine yes so from switzerland she came to uh, she was in new jersey 
yes. New Jersey, and then came to Winchester, met my doctor, got my medicine, and flew to Singapore hmm. to deliver the medicine. Right. See, she was able to cover the whole world within yes. a couple of minutes. Wonders of communication. Yes. Wonders of communication yes. of cell phone. Cell phone. Yes. Yeah. And therefore, not only message, yes. but even physical movement yes. became very swift, right. very quick, right. 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 because of the cell phone, right. the right. smartphones. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. So, um, one question we had hidden here is that, uh, we know you, you are smart in, in many things, everything, but to learn the um, how to use uh, smartphone um, or even a computer, have you taken any classes? No, or? no. Self learning, self taught. No, in uh, the in 1984, yes, I was in Washington D.C. Right, there was a young man. He uh, told me that there is a there are computers mm -hmm. because I was doing all by hand. Right, when I when we received donations, yes, maybe ten donations mm -hmm. in a day, perhaps. Right. Uh, it's, a, it's an example always, you know, $10, ten yes, donation. Yes. Anyway, when it comes, I had to enter it in a book and then write a letter. Uh, I was able to type. I had a you know, typewriter. Mm -hmm. I type a letter one by one, one by one, type. Mm -hmm. Then this man said, Bhante, it's uh, too time consuming. Uh, you, if, you, if you have a computer, you can do this very fast. Yeah. So he took me to the com uh, computer shop yeah. and bought a little computer called Capra. Oh, yes. Capra. Very beautiful, simple computer. Mm -hmm. Of course, those days when you get a computer, you have to format it. Right. You have to format the disk, you know, everything you have to format. <laughs> yes. And there were oh, DOS command and yes. so forth. Right. I did not know any of these mm -hmm. things. He figured out all out. Yeah. And then taught me how to use the computer, right? Okay. And also taught how to generate uh, uh, letters, mm -hmm. uh, form letter. Mm -hmm. You first write the letter. It is right. in the computer. Right. When you receive ten donation, you enter the computer. Right. Yes. And then you want to uh, what do you call print a right. personalized letter. Right. So you put uh, first. Letter of the first name and mm -hmm. first letter of the last name, right. and then letter will be generated right. with the fig, with the amount that yes. person donated. Yes. Similarly, address. Right. So he told me this, and then the, it, my work became very easy and yeah. quick. Right. Since then, I got uh, interested in mm -hmm. learning Learn. computers. Right. So when I came to Bhavana in 88 to mm -hmm. stay, mm -hmm. somebody donated a computer. And then I used it and they taught me how to use it. Yeah. Or at the beginning it was very slow mm -hmm. and slowly and gradually I learned yes. and then I was able to yeah. do a lot of work in the computer. Yeah. Okay, good, good to hear that. One thing, with the advent of social media, uh, people can now connect with others all over the world. Have you witnessed any positive or negative consequences of this global connectivity within your Buddhist community or beyond? Yes. We can see Buddhist communities uh, all over the world. In some countries like uh, South American countries, uh, I very often I used to go to Brazil, uh, Portuguese speaking. Mm -hmm. Only Portuguese speaking yes. countries yeah. in South America. In yes. South America, yeah. other countries speak mm -hmm. Spanish. Yes. When I went there, I did not know any Theravada Buddhist organization or temple in Brazil. Mm -hmm. And then, because of the fast communication, fast traveling, right. uh, I used to go there every year. Right. For many years since yes. 1995, yes. and then I saw uh, pocket of groups of meditators mm -hmm. here and there. Okay. I wish to go there, you know, Rio, Sao Paulo, yes. Sao Paulo, uh, Brasilia, 
é, Belo Horizonte, lá em Plensas, é, é, você vai para estabelecer o Budismo de Sacramento. Moreover, I used to give uh, eight lifetime precepts. Mm -hmm. If there are maybe 80, 90, 100 people, mm -hmm. uh, most of them would accept eight lifetime precepts. I would give lifetime precepts, give Buddhist names and good certificates. And therefore, there are people who are observing eight precepts, eight lifetime precepts in those countries. Mm -hmm. And this has become easy yes. and possible because of the communication, okay. of traveling. Yes. Very good. Modern uh, technology. Yes. yes. Because when I go there, I have to translate those precepts in that particular language. Yes. And print it. Yes. And distribute. Yeah, what I can mean is. So as a monk, you have a unique perspective on the intersection of the technology and spirituality. Can you share your thoughts on how digital communication has affected people's spiritual lives and practices? Also, how have you learned how to use digital devices like laptop, tablets, and their applications such as Microsoft packages, Word, PowerPoint? I think you, you told us part of the story. Right. Laptop. Also, original laptop I got from uh, Florida. Yes. When I went to a retreat, they gave me a donation. Then okay. I asked the uh, people who organized the retreat to use their money to buy me a laptop. Yes. Laptop also actually was about one inch or more thicker. Yes, correct. And, uh, and heavier. Very heavy. Yes. So you have to put a floppy disk, yes. five and a half inch floppy right. disk, yeah. and you have to format it. Yeah. When you travel, you remove the disk and insert another paper, yeah. you know, like cardboard, yes. in order to protect that, you know, the external stock. drive. Yeah. Right. Yes. <clears throat> so that was the first one I received. Yeah. And I gradually, you know, as the second generation, third generation came. Yes. Then we uh, got, uh, you know, the, what we have today. Whatever was at that time. Yes. The latest, I got. Right, right. Somebody okay. would donate. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah. Thank you. 